director of the Tec Community Technological Centers for the Vice Presidency, and Gabriel Recalde, manager for public policy for Google. I want to salute the presence of former directors of service providers in the country. Thank you for joining us to the members of foreign delegations and members of other entities that support this initiative. Officials from the government, friends, ladies and gentlemen, today we are witnesses and also protagonists of a paramount event for the future of employment and the creation of policies, processes, services in the Dominican Republic. I am referring to the creation of the first Google Data School of Data in the Caribbean. The opportunity that we are providing the vulnerable youth is unique with this school that has been decided by the prestigious company Google to install in the DR, providing services to the whole Caribbean. And this is because precisely those youngsters in situations of vulnerability will also have access to a quality education that will open up opportunities for high qualification employment in the digital economy. So with this initiative, we are also bridging gaps, the social gap, the inequality gap, the inequality in opportunity to equal access that's generated through technologies and that today, thanks to this initiative, our young people will have tremendous opportunities. The truth is that the word data is quite proper of the popular jargon. We here in the education centers referring to information that's exchanged between students in the workspaces when one department shares relevant data for decision making. And you can no longer talk about a re serious research or if it has prestige, if it doesn't show that it did strong data research and also the source of the data and the has, that it has gathered. While we, the governments, also face the great challenge of the public data bit, this for us, it was amazing to find true solutions to the problems that the citizens find from a scientific truth, consistent data that would provide us a exact snapshot as to the reality and the need to approach the citizens from the government perspective. In the end, data is everywhere. The generation of data, whether they are not structured or not, has become a priority for private companies, for governments, and also for multilateral entities as well. And especially, I would say, Databases have become an, an economic asset, such so valid that notice that in a very short span of time, it is foreseen that it will replace oil and gold as the most important commodities for the nations. The intelligent data management is essential, and not only for generating economic value, but also, and the most important of all, to generate social wellness, social well-being. Little by little, the common language that human beings share is that of technology, and the ABC of that language is built precisely with data. If for a digital immigrant like myself, this has become in a revelation of uncountable size, you cannot even imagine what it means for the digital natives, especially for future generations. And today, more than ever, I am convinced that we cannot miss out on this opportunity to get on the bandwagon of the digital economy, but on the first wagons, at least. But this is why the Dominican Republic has embarked in the most ambitious strategy to promote digital economy that we had ever experimented. And right at the heart of this strategy of all this re digital and technological revolution in the DR, you find, of course, the community technological centers. The CTCs, as we call them in Spanish, are ideal spaces so that the citizens can become linked for productive purposes because there we are teaching all kinds of skills from 
programming to virtual reality. We also had the opportunity of bringing our youth to the CTC at the New Barquita and the Social Media Week event that it's being celebrated in the country right now. And it was very encouraging to see how the youth presented their ideas uh, during the workshops we developed for them alongside the organizers and how from there they were able to generate their own business ideas, their own income, and how they were providing testimony that they were also learning the third necessary language that is so fundamental for the citizens of this generation, which is programming language. And I am very proud that more and more we implement maker's methodology in most CTCs, we have called them maker spaces. We have 104 CTCs. And from these, we are moving to into maker space, a space for the guys. I say guys, but because in IT, we are all considered guys, kids. But we are open to all ages. And this has been a great innovation for us to keep pace of technological development in the Dominican Republic. And it is our bet so that the youth can develop their skills de having d digital designs with 3D printers, developing prototypes, and building palpable solutions, solutions that also contribute to solve social issues that they identify within their own communities. And if this great strategy, we add data management to it, there is no doubt that we are closer and closer to our goal. The goal of having our communities filled with people capable of making technology a vehicle to wellness, not only individual well-being, but common well-being and the planet's well-being. This uh, school, Carib Caribbean School of Data, has a project. is a project with a lot of and it will be a people that would not be able to develop skills with unimaginable potential. We The need for experts on uh, data management will grow 20% from here until 2026. That's the expectation. We are talking about quality employment here with high demand throughout the world and can very well be done in our country. Maybe in the near future we will be planting the country with safe data management businesses that will serve the whole region and I'm very hopeful that it will be the case. With this big contribution we advance on building a data culture that is more sound for the whole region, an essential step to protect people, to protect their privacy most of all, but also so the data is fully taken advantage for the right thing to develop well-being, progress, and development in our societies. And without a doubt, will also be a great contribution to democracy, institutionality, because the data culture also contributes to accountability and transparency. I would like to thank and congratulate the Open Caribbean Institute to the Internet Registry of Latin America and ETHNIC and the International Research Center for Development of Canada for supporting this initiative. Of course, to thank Google. Google, it's a fundamental tool, inseparable from all of us. It's part of our second to second, not our day to day, but our second to second. So thank you for trusting our country and the potential we have for being a strategic partner to the Taiwan Foundation for also being part of this initiative. And of course, my dear Claudia Doñilla and the Technological Center team that have put so much effort into this initiative and are always looking for innovations to improve the digital culture in our country. Today, with this first uh, School of Data for Google to the whole Caribbean, we are writing a new page on the technological development book of our people. 
in the Dominican Republic and the Caribbean. And we start flying into the data clouds of information and progress opportunities and, and well-being. Thank you very much. Congratulations. I wish you a lot of success. On behalf of the Dominican Republic and its citizens, thank you very much and infinite blessings to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your remarks, Madam Vice President. Now, Mr. Giovanni Estela, General Mayor for Google for Colombia, Central America, and the Caribbean. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Thank you so much to Madam Vice President for her kind remarks, for the warm welcome, and for supporting this project. I'm Giovanni Silla. I'm country manager for Google for Colombia, Central America, and the Caribbean. It is a pleasure for me to be here in Santo Domingo, a country with which we've been working closely for years now for several initiatives. We are here working with Google.rd, giving good news as to how from Google we want to continue supporting digital education in the region and particularly the Caribbean. It is a true pleasure because it's not always easy to organize projects of this magnitude of this kind. It is You don't always have allies like the COI and also the other entities that are here today and that will make this project possible. Google.rg, which is the philanthropic arm of Google, seeks to enhance the works of innovative companies that understand the needs of the population that they impact. These organizations are always searching for solutions to solve scaled issues and large issues for those communities. This is why every year engineers and Google professionals support projects and organizations like the the Open Institute of the Caribbean and now the Caribbean School of Data that we are presenting today so that we can basically promote through technical education the progress for those populations. Our partnership with the COI is a showing of this in this Caribbean School of Data project. Through this joint project, what we are seeking is to re bridge the digital gap and empower through knowledge and manage open data managed to young populations in the Caribbean that for diverse reasons are not linked yet. This is important. What we are aiming for with this project is to assist and to train young people that right now are unemployed, are not in school, so that through technology we can basically contribute to offering them an alternative. The School of Data project will then allow, within a period of two years, to train a minimum of 1,500 young people in six countries, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Guyana, and St. Lucia, all in the Caribbean. That is also a very important step and is a very, let's say, relevant data for us. I would like to publicly I thank our Gabriel Alcalde, who is on our team, has been heading the project for Google because it is important that in these initiatives that are being executed in the region of the Caribbean to solve the problem of the digital gap, it's important and it is a pleasure for us to work here specifically at the Caribbean that is not always easy to uh, attain the resources and it is a fragmented region. It is one that carries many challenges that you are more acquainted with than I am. And I think that it carries an even stronger, greater value when you manage it, you manage to implement these projects. And so 
At Google, we believe that technology and innovation can expedite, accelerate changes in both in the personal and professional realm. That is why for almost 15 years, Google.org works to expand the scope of institutes like the COI and has a unique support network offering trainings, donations, etc. The benefit of digital innovation have a wide outreach. We are being driven to create innovative solutions to complex challenges like that of digital education and the digital gap. However, not all can have this benefit of this kind of support. Not always do all people manage to access those benefits. And that is why initiatives like this from Karim School of Data is particularly important because it is one more way to offer tools to people, tools and opportunities to people that wouldn't necessarily have them. We are convinced that through the digi digital education and training in digital topics that we will manage and that we can continue closing, bridging this gap. I would like to see the opportunity to thank our partners. I had already mentioned the Caribbean Open Institute. I would also like to thank, of course, again, Madam Vice President for being here with us, for joining us, for showing her support from the government for this initiative, to Claudio Doñé for the partnership that we've had for quite a while now, to other institutions that are here today, to Mona Freza, who has been with us, joining us from other countries. In the end, thank you all for making this project possible, and hopefully we can continue contributing to bridge the digital gap and to offer opportunities to young people that wouldn't necessarily have the same opportunities than others. Thank you very much. Now we will have via video conference, Mr. Fernando Perini, director for the IDRC in Spanish. International for the government of Canada. Mr. Fernando is based in Montevideo, Uruguay, and is joining us via video conference. I just wanted to say something small. Fernando started on open data in the Caribbean back in the year 2010, I believe, when he was a project manager in IDRC, and he is truly the pioneer in the region on this topic. Fernando, you have the floor. Welcome. Technical team, please. Fernando. I don't know if he can see us. Giovanni Stella, Gabriel Cesar Diaz from Nick, Maurice Jesse, my colleagues from the Open Caribbean Open Institute, friends from the Dominican Republic and the Caribbean. Welcome. Good morning, everyone. It is a pleasure to be here and participate for the launch of the Caribbean School of Data. On behalf of the IDRC, I apologize for not being there physically, but I assure you that my colleagues and us, we are here. We are there with you. The Caribbean Open Institute, or COI, has been a very important partner for the RADRC for exploring new solutions for the use of data for development as a result of a consultation made for almost three years. The fact that we are here is I'm sorry, I had to adjust my audio. It is evident that the 
the Caribbean Data Committee is here and was always active during all the 10 years from the initial consultations that were done. It is a committee that evolved also to respond to new topics and challenges, just as the future of employment that we are discussing today. For us at IDRC, the COI was the first center to also have hubs and centers in Latin America, Africa, the English and French speaking Africa, Middle East, Asia, and Eastern Europe. So these are networks that work in a south south way. They're called Open Data for Development, Open Data for. And I have the pleasure to coordinate that global network for many years and work closely with my colleagues in the Caribbean. The object of this network is to exchange experiences and best practices based on open data that can be expanded at a global level and at the same time adapted, integrated to local processes. This last point is very important, the need to adapt within the context and challenges of each region. The idea behind the Caribbean School of Data was inspired in our experience from other regions and uh, tailored for the realities of the Caribbean and for the factors and for local partners. As an agency that supports research for development and IRDRC Canada, one of the topics that concerns us the most right now at IDRC is to how uh, disruptive technologies will impact the southern countries and especially those most vulnerable populations. So. For three three years ago, we started working and discussing it online outsourcing involving the third party contracting that they could generate ways to, for microemployment for populations in Haiti and that idea for a new employment opportunities undoubtedly very attractive. But we knew that for this opportunity to be inclusive, we needed to, to work beyond traditional groups. We needed to expand the capabilities of the most marginalized groups. And so together with the Caribbean Open Internet and NIC, we established the IT initiative three years ago that has the objective to of improving opportunities as far as access to digital economy for Haitian women. We found solutions and the idea was to find solutions to mitigate uh, deficits in capability and infrastructure in the country. Based on the lessons learned from that experience, we started to talk to Google and the Caribbean Open Internet as to the possibility of creating a regional initiative, and that is what we're talking about today, and to do capacity building and opportunity development to work in several countries in the Caribbean. And this is supported on human capital and collaborations that have been built in the last 10 days of work and regional collaboration. And so we are committed from the IDRC to continue supporting research, innovation, and political dialogue in the Caribbean Open Institute. And, and whatever else, and Google support will also be important to significantly expand the uh, lines for training. Together, we hope that these training, innovation, political dialogue, and research would uh, provide feedback and thus expand in the, da the data economy in the region. For instance, we hope that here in the Dominican Republic, having the support of the CTCs, more people can become trained right at their own towns and find opportunities for employment by using information technologies. And that will benefit not only those that are directly employed, but also the whole local economy. So for the IDRC, it has been an honor to work with COI, with Google, in developing this new initiative and that this will be a new walk that we will go together. Congratulations to all our colleagues from the Dominican Republic and the Caribbean. And we hope that you become an essential part of the future of this initiative. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando, for your remarks. Now we have Mr. Cesar Dia, Strategic Relations Leader and for Telecommunications of the ECNIC. Thank you very much. 
Madam Margarita Cedeño, Vice President of the Dominican Republic, Mr. Nelson Gent, President of Indotel, Giovanni Sela, Country Manager for Google, Gabriel Recalo, Manager of Central America and the Caribbean for Google, other authorities from the Dominican Republic, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to be in the Dominican Republic one more time with our Caribbean brethren at this event. I'd like to also thank Google for the opportunity that has provided us to ensure our participation in the launch of the Caribbean School of Data. As was well expressed by I'm Cesar Dia, leader for strategic relations and telecommunications for the LACNIC, which is Internet Registry for Latin America in the Caribbean. And as an organization, we are deeply committed in fostering the development of Latin America and the Caribbean as far as the growth of the Internet in the region, as well as the insertion of our region in the digital era and the digital economy. At the LACNIC, we have several initiatives, and one of those is precisely like it was mentioned by Fernando a while ago. We A couple of years ago, we had an initiative called AGITIC. AGITIC was global, was is and a financial fin funded by LACNIC and the and the IDRC of Canada, and it is an initiative that basically inspires the inspire the Caribbean School of Data as a project. It had the objective of improving the conditions for access to employment for women in the sister Republic of Haiti through the through digital capacity building. Precisely all the efforts related to the preparement of courses, online courses and developing digital skills was worked together with the Caribbean Open Institute, who were also the drivers of the Caribbean School of Data and with our local Asian colleagues, the Superior Infratronic School, or ESIH, who were in charge of training our beneficiaries and the cross cutting Foundation that coordinated it at local level. Precisely, the program was a pilot where we tried to understand two key topics. Number one, how to drive the development of digital skills in the region, and secondly, how to connect young Haitian people, young Haitian women, with empl online employment opportunity amidst the challenges in the region. IGTIC Global, Cross Global, that was launched at the beginning of 2017, this initiative, and we had just closed in September with very good figures through these pilot. We trained over 300 women that were highly affected kinds of trainings. As a particular note, from the trainings that we have, 85% of the women pass these courses, numbers that are quite encouraging given that we have a high level of desertion and a dropout. As far as of profitability, probably graduates were managed to get some online customers, and that really pleases us and satisfies us. Working remotely, also, we have some doing some internships to strengthen their digital skills. The program also worked in strengthening the skills in the graduates through a mentoring program and preparing them for the professional world. The Caribbean School of Data for ACNIC is an opportunity. We see this with joy. It is an enormous joy to see that the content and also and also the learning of this pilot will translate into will be moved into this new project and the work done together with like the, with the Agitech initiative at a regional level will serve as a reference so that for the training and development in the region. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cesar. Now we have a presentation that will be in English. That's why we recommend that for those that are non-English speaking or a Jamaican English to please retrieve your headsets. Mr. Morix McNewton, who is a professor of the 
Business School of the West Indies University in the Mona campus and also is a coordinator for the Caribbean Open Institute who will be presenting in for the program in further detail. Gracias, Yacine. Uh, buenos días a todos. Uh, Perdóname, mi español es uh, muy mal. I apologize, my uh, Spanish so is not good at all. Uh, por favor, I'll have to speak in English. Um, uh, oh. So, Mr. Master of Ceremonies, um, thank you very much. Uh, allow me, please, to observe prior protocol, um, although I must especially recognize uh, uh, the Vice President uh, de la Republica Dominicana, uh, Senora Margarita Cedeno. I really enjoyed your remarks uh, very much. Um, also, Senor Claudio Doni, uh, Director of CTC. Uh, we had some conversations uh, a few weeks ago and things have moved quite rapidly. I'm so delighted to be here again. Uh, Giovanni um, and the team from uh, Google uh, must recognize as well my colleagues from the Mona School of Business and Management, one of the principal implementation partners here, Dr. David McBean, uh, mentioned earlier, and our Director of Marketing, Jenny Senlin, and uh, our implementation partners, the Slash Roots Foundation, I think Doyen is somewhere in the house, uh, Doyen Williams, so uh, must uh, recognize those as well. Uh, so, for me, much has been said, and as uh, both Fernando um, and uh, Cesar mentioned, we've been working at this to get to this point. I want to give you a little bit of perspective on uh, what brought us here, and you've heard some of that a little bit. Um, I would say that the Caribbean School of Data, the CSOD, is first and foremost an idea. It, it, it's a concept that growth of research and development that we've been doing through the Caribbean Open Institute in the past several years, as Fernando mentioned, working with various partners across the Caribbean, such as Fundacion Taigui um, in, in multiple countries. And through many of those efforts, largely around open data, uh, Madam Vice President, we came to the realization that uh, one of the big problems that we must solve is data literacy. Uh, I have seen in several multilateral reports that the Caribbean is described as data poor, uh, data poverty, which means that we don't, we have limited access to high quality, uh, locally relevant, openly accessible data. Uh, there are cultural and institutional habits that prevent us from using data for policy making and decisions, both in the public and the private sector. And there's no excuse for that. I mean, we have limited resources in the Caribbean, but I think that we are the cultural and intellectual capital of the world, and there's absolutely no reason why we should not be data rich. Um, so it was out of those recognitions um, that we decided that there's a need for some kind of institution to uh, tackle this problem, to help to lead the charge against this problem to build an institution that could help to transform the landscape, um, to create a culture where data is seen as an asset, as an economic asset, where data is exploited to create value for businesses, to improve service delivery in the public sector, and to enhance the way our citizens engage with the, and participate in the digital economy. And one of the things from the outset we were particularly concerned with is how do we do this to scale? So that we're not talking about training tens of persons in the traditional way where they come and sit in a room. We want to train hundreds and thousands. Um, so scalability is a very important part of this um, project. And, and we had the privilege of being able to partner, as I said, with uh, uh, with the Ag project in, in Haiti with a set of partners led by LACNIC and the IDRC and we're able to test some of the ideas as to how we scale digital capacity building and data skills training um, and doing it in the way that is relevant to the Caribbean. I mean we've seen lots of trainings online that require hard high bandwidth um, such as the MOOCs uh, but we have to build something that allows our kids to be able to participate and not be marginalized by the digital divide. 
So halfway through the project, uh, we had the good fortune just about a year ago. I had the good fortune to be introduced to Gabrielle. Um, Carolina from LACNIC facilitated that and uh, he obviously liked what we're doing in Haiti and said, well, how can we make this bigger? How can we scale this? Um, and here we are looking at a pilot project in uh, six to seven countries and to see how this model of learning and data skills capacity building um, scales. And, and I'm really delighted, uh, Giovanni, that Google.org was so responsive so quickly to the proposals that we put together um, jointly um, to make this happen. So what are we talking about here for this project? Uh, we, we have what we call a big idea. The big idea is to increase employability and economic opportunities for at-risk youth through digital literacy and data skills training. And it's important to understand what that means. We're not just giving people skills so I go away and we say, well, I now know how to do this. The goal is employability. The goal is to create economic opportunities. That's a big idea. And there are a number of ways that we're looking at this, building this capability across the country through local partners. Again, very much is are taking the model that we use in Haiti, working with SE and uh, replicating that. Uh, developing a portfolio of courses that are multilingual. One of the things that I find fascinating about the Caribbean as a region I believe we're the most multilingual region in the world, per capita. You know, you're going from French to Spanish to English to Dutch and a whole variety of uh, 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 Creoles and Papiamento and so forth. Very multilingual region. So a regional initiative like the Caribbean School of Data has necessarily to build multilingual courses that are modular. Um, as you heard earlier, targeting at least 1,500 marginalized youth and building around that a vibrant community uh, so that the private sector and employers are an important part of this network. Uh, and, you know, the way that we have this, uh, what I call, blended model of life, as one of talk about so this whole idea of being able to take school home with you. Uh, you don't have to be in a physical space. I mean, the CTC, the great facilities, Claudia. I had the opportunity to visit a few of them. I see some of the managers here that I interacted with when I came. And they're great facilities. Um, but we also want to create flexibility so that wherever they are, they can learn. They can engage with the training materials. One of the things that we learned from the Ag Project in Haiti is the critical, important role of facilitators. Uh, so while we believe in this self-paced learning, but we're not leaving the kids on their own, uh, we're finding a set of people who will be trained. And over the next two days, we'll be doing this facilitator training. Um, and that's a critical success factor. And the third thing we've done with this, um, Gabrielle, is we're not only training people with data skills, but we're using data as an important part of how we roll this out. So we provide the facilitators and the administrators with a lot of what we call learning analytics so we can understand how each individual is progressing, what areas they have challenges, and that's a really important aspect of this. Uh, so the model is, is essentially what we call this CSOD blended learning model, which combines facilitator-led sessions with this mobile-enabled learning, data-driven assessment, and we think that is the way to build um, training that can scale. Um, thank you, Yasin, for that time check. Uh, um, I'm not going to say too much here except to say that what we're rolling out now is this introductory um, CSOD uh, course to get the kids to what we call digitally literate and data functional. And then what we're really excited about is a set of advanced um, data courses around things like big data analytics, around things like uh, geospatial data tools and techniques um, that really embrace with um, uh, the trends in the modern um, digital economy. One of the key things about this CSOD model is that it's built on partnerships. Uh, so this doesn't happen with us without a set of key partners in each country, local country training partners, community-based organizations that already have an established presence with these constituencies. So we're not looking to invent, reinvent the wheel. We bring a certain amount of digital capability, but we're looking for these partners to leverage the presence that they have. And of course, the private sector, I can't emphasize enough how critical it is for the business community to plug into uh, this program. 
Uh, so I'll just mention here some of the partners that we've already uh, engaged with across the Caribbean. Uh, of course, in the Dominican Republic, um, CTC and Fundacion Taigwe, um, our partner in SA, the Ag Project, we'll continue to work with them um, to scale that up. In Puerto Rico, Co Trotters Academy. Um, in Jamaica, a set of interesting partners, the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce, which gives us the plug into the business community, and their foundation, the Summer Eunice Foundation, Change Makers. In Guyana, the University of Guyana. In Trinidad, we're looking at an interesting model where it's a slightly different constituent. We're working with the Caribbean ICT research program to do this kind of digital skills training for uh, fisher folk uh, in a number of countries. And again, that's a quite interesting model. So you can see a variety of partnerships that we've already established across the region. I'm also working on mobilizing partnerships in St. Lucia as well. Um, not going to say much here. Uh, I see my moderator looking at me um, with raised eyebrows. Um, but I, I have to emphasize that the role of the facilitator is such a critical success factor. Um, I see a number of them here. These are the young kids who are going to be working with the students in the CTCs um, to engage with them, to support them, to inspire them. Um, and it's such a critical role and one that we're very uh, committed to ensuring that we have trained facilitators um, in each of the territories. Um, for us, um, the Caribbean School of Data represents an indigenous solution for the Caribbean that takes into account, as Fernando said earlier, our own distinctive challenges, but competences as well, um, and not simply for the minority that already have access to resources, but for the most vulnerable. Um, working with the Dominican Republic to rule this out is uh, something that I am thrilled by. DOMREP is going to be our flagship deployment, uh, followed closely by Jamaica, which we launched on the 1st of October. Um, thank you, Claudio. Thank you, Yassine, for being partners in this. I can't say enough, Madam Vice President, uh, how impressed I am with the scope of the strategy and the operations at the CTCs and the, the kind of uh, youth-friendly spaces that you've created there. And we're hoping that the work that we do, bringing this additional portfolio of training, can help to enhance that. And uh, you've set the bar very high. And uh, I think there's much that the rest of us in the Caribbean can learn from what you're doing there. Um, but we hope that we can replicate the experiences here in the Dom Rep. So thank you very much. Muchas, muchas gracias, Maurice. Thank you Yo very much, decir, como del I wanted español, to say, because from eh, English I, to Spanish, there is something very particular about languages. Uh, facilitator in English is both the genders, and here we say facilitators for female and male gender. And that's the key of this program, because we have objectives for young females, uh, women that had to, had to drop out of schools because of pregnancy or any number of situations at home. And we are giving them the option to be reintegrated into society with this program. So from English to Spanish. In English, you don't have gender, but facilitator and facilitators, you know, gender, female, and male in Spanish or girls and boys. Now, Ms. Claudia Donier, Director of the Technological Community Centers, uh, please, your remarks. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Good evening, uh, Mr. Vice President, uh, for once again demonstrating that the commitment you have taken, it's a commitment that you don't delegate or see from afar, but you have delegated some of the responsibility on my shoulders, but you do give me a special follow-up and support me as you are doing this morning here and I really appreciate it and I am very appreciative of having Nelson Guillen's presence. He is a strategic partner for the uh, technological community centers, uh, Google representatives and Maurice also here with us. He's one of the key leaders and I want to uh, highlight a, a very special individual that I've known for many years connected to the internet topic of the Dominican Republic and it's Yassim Keladi. I want a, a round of applause for you because 
we met a long time ago with this topic unfortunately we always said we had to do something together and an opportunity has arrived an extraordinary one at that and it's a major contributor to everything we have achieved in this country for many years now this morning when i arrived here i was i got on the elevator and i met four partners from la cienega that's in barahona and i asked them what time did you woke up to be here at nine and they said at three are you awake guys in the back are you sure you're awake And I thought of how the uh, vice president, how us with the technological community centers have been able to permeate the country. Because today there are 104 locations, some much more isolated than La Cienega. We have communities so isolated as Rio Limpio in the northern border of the country or isolated communities like Savannah de la Mar. We are anywhere. And when I thought of those uh, sleepless hours they've had, it's a good thing they're young. If it were me, I'm, I'm very sleepy today because I didn't sleep well, but of course, I'm old. These young guys can wake up very early. If you fall asleep today, you're going to be in trouble because they have to live here to a workshop, so absolutely forbidden to fall asleep. The Madam Vice President has driven a project that it's a true army of young people committed to making sure that in this country there's not a single person that doesn't have the opportunity to enjoy the wonders of internet and more than enjoy these wonders, that there is not a single individual that is left out from the chance of being educated and develop themselves as individuals or have an opportunity to work. We have been doing this for many years. The Vice President, more than me, because I just showed up in the last five years, but the Madam Vice President, has a long road traveled and it is truly something that I always stand out and recognize because it's a silent contribution without a lot of fuzz or noise but it is constant it's always happening and it is given the opportunity to young people and adults to be truly connected to the future. In 2017, we gathered 100 stories for 100 centers we had at the time. And these stories are from people that are an advanced age that can testify of how much they enjoy being able to communicate through the internet. But in that document, in this book that we will be giving you, there are stories which are the most predominant one of young people whose lives were radically changed. Some were not clear where they were headed. Others had the desire to learn more. Anyways, in 100 locations, we were able to collect 100 stories that say that if we give the chance for you, the most of all, to be skillful users of the internet, they can develop competences that will allow them to improve their livelihood conditions because that's what it's all about. We say in this book, the title is 100 Stories and one million opportunities. Precisely, a million opportunities because 
to think that with with what we're doing with this project, we will benefit at least 300 young boys and girls. At least 300. I believe we have a challenge to a number because of the culture we have and the army of volunteers and young individuals we have here. I don't know if I'm saying something that is true. Are any of the guys, can you stand up? Some of the guys from CTC, could you please stand up? No, it's true. It is true. Thank you very much. These are only the few selected to carry the project forward. These are represented 11 centers, so 10%. It's not something out of this world. But we will be moving forward. Mr. Hope we're going to be doing a great thing in the Dominican Republic with this project. Because to think that a young girl, a young boy from La Cienega can work from there, it's really something impressive. This same guys that will have to get up at 3 a.m. to hop on a bus wouldn't have to do it because with a program such as this, they will develop skills that would allow them to work, for example, uh, doing some app testing, software testing, or they can learn how to manage data in such a way that they can work for marketing companies uh, and so on. So they can be truly data miners. They can be exploiting the new raw material of this new economy, which is data. And how good. I really think these institutions that will enable this and make it possible, because as Madam Vice President said, this project connects to that vision for development that we have carried forward at the CTCs. And we are challenged every year as the speedy train of technology moves forward. We are challenged to hop on to ensure or with the purpose of making sure that not a single person that wants to do it, but because of social conditions or geographic restrictions are excluded. With projects like this, we are achieving one of the aspirations given by the Vice President's permanent speech, and that is about reducing the social gap that excludes and how good is it that with the technology, we can make that vehicle of social inclusion of it, that vehicle for personal development, that way of making sure that what was impossible before is today a possibility by allowing anyone who wishes to do it to get it done. Finally, I want to say that this project is not just about developing technical skills. It has a very special attention to those young individuals that have been dropping out of school, those girls that have had difficulties, maybe uh, got pregnant and could not continue the work. So we have a real special focus of interest, those young individuals at risk of social exclusion. And we have particularly selected them in a very special way to have an accurate measurement on how their lives will be impacted and changed, because that's what it's about, using technology as a vehicle for human development, for social inclusion, for citizens' involvement, for empowerment, citizens' empowerment. That allows us to have a better country, a country that is more inclusive, where all its citizens feel equal. So thank you very much. CTC commits today in front of you to become the vehicle of 
materialize in this project. That's why we brought the managers for these 11 centers. Um, part of uh, facilitators that will be trained to develop the skills that allow them to go hand in hand with these young individuals because they're not just going to be, as I said, uh, managing the hard tools, but they will also be trained on soft skills that would allow them to find and penetrate their inner core to awaken that dormant potential or overcome the frustrations that keep them from discovering that when a young individual decides to move forward and advance, it can be done. And a project like this, it's an expedited vehicle to achieve that. Thank you very much. And believe me, it is truly a pleasure to think that uh, more and more, Madam Vice President, we make it possible, little by little. We are going to start with 300, and we are going to surpass that, Giovanni. 300 is too little. We're going to do a lot more. Every day, we are going to encourage these young individuals we have so that they become drivers and enable others as well because the methodology it's a semi a presential the facilitators will be encouraging the rest so nobody is left behind so thank you very much Thank you very much, Mr. Claudio Lanier, for your words. Now I invite Gabriel Ricard. Gabriel Ricard, a manager for public policies at Google. There's going to be a conversation with Ms. Elizabeth Del Valle. She's global marketing leader for YouTube Gaming. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I think a lot has been said about the importance of educating youth in technology. So we didn't want to let the event close without having a talk with one of the so many Dominicans that work at Google and today represent the whole committee, not only for the Dom Rep, but also for the Caribbean that work at our company to talk a little bit about their experience as to how their life trajectory has gone to leading them to one of the most important technology companies and what takeaways can you give the young people that starting today will embark on this career technology? Elizabeth Del Valle, she is Dominican. She works in the YouTube team in California. She traveled from California to Santo Domingo to be here with us. And tell us a little bit, Elizabeth, as to how your career has been, starting from your beginnings in the DR until today, working at the YouTube team. Well, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. It was a long trip, but I'm very happy to be here in the country to see my family and friends. And most of all, very happy to see that our company is uh, partnering with institutions that are trying to train youth, the youth. For me, particularly, it's something very important and it's something that I still do on a daily basis. But let me tell you a little bit of what I've done with Google. I've been working for Google for five years now. I've always been part of the marketing department and I've had the opportunity of working for different products and company areas. I started working for Google Play where I had the opportunity of working 
at the launch of Google Play Music app for international markets, I also work for uh, several projects of Google Play Movies when it was launched for Samsung devices, Roku platforms. And I also had the chance to work on a number of projects that specifically had to do with mobile gaming for Android phones. And from that point on, I've always told everyone I love video games. Because before I started working with Google, I had a chance to work for PlayStation. I work on the launch of PlayStation 4. And from that point on, I said, that's the industry I want to work for. And since last year, I've been working as global manager for marketing programs of YouTube gaming. For those of you that don't know what YouTube gaming is, it's pretty much the side of YouTube where we have video gaming content. We have a lot of YouTubers that do uh, games reviews. We have game trailers and also YouTubers that simply teach their subscribers how to move from one level to the next in the games they play. And my role is a strategic marketing side we work a lot of everything that has to do with advertisement campaigns whether they're digital or external anything we do in social media as well as a lot of data management the number one thing we do before launching any campaign is a research program to learn what the user wants what the youtubers want and i also manage all of the events nationwide in the united states and internationally a lot of educational programs so that YouTubers know of the tools that the platform has available for them to uh, make profit and grow their brand and subscriber based in the platform. A little bit of everything. Very interesting for the video game for kids that go into adolescence. That is one of the most interesting ones. And I also feel that it carries challenges that it shares with the rest of the technological industry, which is to provide incentives to diversity and talent. So I wanted to ask you, how what was your experience as a woman to develop your career within that industry? And how do you think it's possible for other women, Dominican and in the Caribbean, to become more interested in these kinds of initiatives or educational programs? Well, I had the opportunity uh, moving to the United States with my family, precisely where I was at a, when I had just started my uh, college studies, I was at uh, Politecnico Manuel de Gracia in Villa Duarte, and I was doing a couple of semesters in the. I always work with professors. I was the first one who said, "Well, if there is a marketing project, please call me." Uh, I want to go to marketing, and that's specifically what I want to do. I had the chance to work with several research projects, and we had to analyze uh, focus groups, uh, surveys, and I kind of knew I wanted to work for marketing. Working in the video game industry was something that came along later. And from then on, I learned the importance of having mentors, having people that you can discuss ideas with, and from that point on, I started surrounding myself with a lot of women that showed me its importance and the importance of, you know, uh, making a living, hustling, like we say here, going to panels and all those type of things, so specifically women in the industry. I don't know if a lot of people uh, are familiar with this, but over 46% of gamers, at least in the United States, are important. Have women in the industry, except in Google, where all the products we develop are designed for everyone. It's very important to have people that have a global mentality, people that can identify in the video game industry with those that are playing. If it's female, we have to have females in the industry helping create content. If they're in the marketing area, to help create advertisement campaigns that are relevant and attractive for these gamers as well. And when I think about what it's needed, number one, we have to develop a passion. First, learn what are the projects I like, what brings me joy. I don't think I do would do anything else other than work for this industry because it brings me joy. And number two, as I said, having people in your life, that helps. But the most important thing is academical training. Unfortunately, not everyone has a chance to go to university, but we do have 
projects that provide access that promote digital topics, data management issues, and things that are extremely important to help you develop for the areas that are not only going to allow us to develop this global mentality I was telling you about, but will also allow us to generate income. And that's the most important thing in the end, to be in employable, to find works that help us contribute to society and generate income for ourselves as individuals and our families. One of the topics that you mentioned that helped you to double your career was that are putting passion into things, we be passionate. What other recommendation would you give maybe to Dominican youth that may start to become educated through this, uh, this career school of data besides putting passion into what else worked for you so that you could, say, be successful in this sector? You have to be disciplined. I feel that we are here today the program is already part of the Dominican Republic. It's part of the Caribbean. The power is in your hands, as they would say. It's very important to not only know that the project exists, now we have to enforce it. And when you enforce it and give the chance for everyone to participate, because it's truly a privilege to be part of this project like this. The second thing is discipline. If you have to go to classes three days a week, if they assign projects that you have to turn in next week, discipline is the first thing. And it's like a sport. When you see those playing baseball, for instance, or basketball, these are disciplined individuals. You have to have a diet. You have to work out every day. And education is the same thing. But as I said, we have the program. Now the most important thing is for people to apply it and make sure that everyone takes it seriously because it's a privilege. All of these organizations partnered up and have a company like Google contributing to the country and to this project. It's something extremely important. And to close, as a Dominican, what do you hope as to the impact that this program can have in your country? What would you like to see resulting from this experience? I personally, I know that we have a goal of about 1,500 individuals in the next couple of years throughout the Caribbean region to reach all of them. The good thing, the beautiful thing would be to look at a larger number. And that's number one. Number two, I would personally love to see a lot of more youth apply into projects in the technological industry, more young Dominican individuals at Google. As I said, we need a fresh perspective contributing to topics of interest in the Dominican society. We have to grow the economy, not only for the country, but the whole Caribbean region. To have a Dominican flavor in Google. Of course, the Dominican flavor in Google. In fact, we have a group called uh, Google Dominicans, and we always get together. Uh, one will make some mango, the other one will make some kosha. We're very few short group, but we always get together and, and stick together. And the Dominican flavor you cannot find, especially in California. There are very few of us. Very, very few. So hopefully we'll see a lot more. Also, too, I thank you very much, Elizabeth. Well, thank you very much to Elizabeth. Thank you very much to Gabriel for this last segment of this event for this launch. I would like to highlight the craziness that we got ourselves into. We're not going to train those who had it easier. We're going to help those that today have it hard. We're going to to do that change. I think that there we have a very big challenge. The other challenge, well, Claudio knows this. I also live in La Cienega de Barra, even though I didn't come early this morning, but I also live there. And when I started there with the the CDCs 15 years ago, the four that were here were at that adventure that was called Guanabanet, which was the first internet in the La Cienega. The big challenge is how you train people that will not go away later because anyone who learns to do something leaves. And those three that are there from La Cienega that they were with me 10 years ago in Guanabanet, they are still in La Cienega. So I think it can be done, but now we're going to expand. And I a call out for the private sector, a call out for whoever works here for industry and commerce, private sector, chambers of commerce, the business sector, 
partner with this project. Let's find ways because that is the big challenge to have the people that are trained that we can introduce them uh, with mentoring. Also, those that want to be mentored for those youngsters that are going towards the end of their training to go into the employment world to start up in their country from there, receive a good salary and develop in their rural world, I call them to partner with this project. We're going to be doing the training, but we need you for the part of it, inserting them into new business model where they can process data, do marketing, digitalize, do BPO, whatever is needed, but without having to move to the capital, to the city, without having to deprive the, the people in their town from, the, from these years. And I think that this partnership between the CTCs Social Development Office of the Dominican Republic, Google, private sector, academia. We're going to focus on this. We have to give another.